So our friend David M asks, with the VIX at such low levels, is now the time to start buying VIX calls? Remember, in order for VIX calls to actually pay off, because it's such a directional trade, not only do you have to be right on the direction that it moves, but you also have to get the timing right as well. These are theta negative trades. They will bleed value the longer you are wrong. So even if the VIX does spike up maybe two months from now, well, if you're in VIX calls, the timing matters and getting it early is actually the same thing as just getting it outright wrong. So now I want to go into the trading software and actually show you maybe three potential trades that would be a higher probability of success than just rolling the dice on those VIX calls that actually getting the timing right is nearly impossible. So the first trade that I'm going to show you that I would consider a pretty decent trade, let's take a look at an iron condor on the VIX index. Now, I always like to give these trades a little bit of time. So let's say this May cycle right here. If we go out, I'm just going to show you what a basic iron condor looks like on the VIX index. So this is a very tight spot, but what I actually want to do is I want to show you an out of the money iron condor. So I'm going to adjust these, the put option to 15, sorry, 18, 15, 18, 15, and then out of the money, you can go as far as you really want, but let's check out the 27 and the 30. This is an out of the money iron condor on the VIX index. You can see the premium is 236. So one contract is basically $64. Essentially the maximum loss for an iron condor is just the strike gap minus the premium you bring in. So the maximum loss in this case is 64 bucks. If we scale this thing to $1,000, let's say we go to something like 16 is probably close. Yeah, that's about right. So 16 contracts, you're risking about $1,000. And if the VIX just goes up a little bit, it's actually going to start to be in the good range. If it's anywhere from 18 to 27, you're talking about the potential for 3,776. This is a much higher probability of success, right? We don't actually need the VIX to skyrocket in order to make a profit. Now, if it does skyrocket, if it does go into the 30s or 40s, well, of course, you can just exit the trade and you're not going to be losing very much. But the point is, if you think the VIX is going to go up, it's a much better probability of success if you play for something that's a reasonable reasonable spike. I know everybody dreams of that moment where they're going to buy VIX calls and they're going to nail it perfectly, but that's just not the reality for trading. You actually want to be much more conservative. This is a trade that is obviously going to benefit if the VIX goes higher, but let's be realistic. We're not going to have to call this perfectly. Now, one thing that I will say when you're trading complex options on any other underlying like a stock or an index, typically you'd be very worried about having in the money options, right? This is an out of the money option spread where some of these strikes are going to already be in the money. But just remember, when you're dealing with the VIX index, this is a cash settled index. You do not have to worry about early assignment. You can trade any strikes you want, and those contracts are yours until you decide to exit. So you can basically do whatever you want on the VIX. That is an advantage when it comes to complex option spreads. So that's our first trade, an iron condor. Let's look at another one. If you follow my work, this one will be actually quite familiar to you. But let's look at a broken wing butterfly. So first of all, standard butterfly, again, very narrow. We're going to have to adjust this. But if I say make this middle strike at 18, this one at 15, and this one at 21, this is actually a standard butterfly. Now, there's nothing wrong with this trade. You can see that this is risking $37. And if the VIX does go up near 18, well, it could make as much as 261. This is a good trade on its own. However, if we dip this 20 back down to 20, it becomes a broken wing butterfly. And now you can see what's happening is I transferred some of that risk from over here to this side. So we can still lose money if the VIX doesn't go up. But as long as it goes up a point or two, now it's going to be in that same nice profit range. But look at this side. You can see unlimited over here, no matter how high the VIX goes, you will also make money. Broken wing butterflies, you can choose the side of the trade that you want to put the risk on. And in this case, you said that you think the VIX is going to spike imminently here. So you can actually make it so the high side has no risk at all. Now let's scale this thing again. So we've got $46 for a maximum loss. What if we did 20? That gets us pretty close. 21 of them. That's about right. We could actually even push it to 22. So we're risking 1,012. If the VIX creeps up a little bit, you're talking about a potential maximum gain of about $5,400. Now you're not 
going to nail it perfectly, of course. But the point is, there is actually a pretty big tent here of potential profit. And then if what happens, big, massive VIX spike, well, you're still going to make almost $1,200 if that happens. You're not going to completely kick yourself that you missed the boat. Broken wing butterflies are a really high probability of success trade. You can structure this any way you want, and you can put the risk where you think is least likely. Again, in your case, you think VIX staying low is quite unlikely. So might as well dump all the risk over here, right? So that's the second trade. And then the third trade, I'm just going to highlight your VIX call and just show you a potentially better choice. So let's say you were saying you're going to do a $20 VIX call. Well, that would look like this. And the problem with VIX calls, obviously, like I said, with the VIX all the way over here, not only do you have to get the direction right, but of course you have to get the timing right as well, because this is a theta negative trade. You're going to be bleeding money every day that you're wrong. But let's scale this to the same $1,000. So what is that? About 11 of them. Close enough. 1,045. Let's say the VIX goes to 25. This person can make as much as $4,500. Betting 1,000, making 4,500, that seems pretty great, right? But there's actually something else that we can do instead. We can use the same 20 strike, but we can just build it into a vertical instead. So that's going to look like this. Now, I'm going to adjust this. Instead of a 20 to 21, let's do 20 to 25. With the VIX call, we were saying that person can make the money at 25. They can make $4,500. Well, this person is betting 36. So let's do 30 of them. That gets pretty close. Let's drop it down to 29. How about 28? Pretty much exactly. 1,008. But if the VIX goes to 25, this person makes almost $13,000. Obviously, that's a superior trade to a straight up VIX call. The reason this is happening is because you're essentially sacrificing what would happen if the VIX all the way to 50 or 60. And you're basically just saying, no, it's if it goes up, it's going to be something reasonable. I want to get all my money right there at 25. And I would just forego everything over here. Now, I will remind you that if, for example, you wanted your number to be 30, like here, this person can now make almost $10,000 if the VIX goes to 30. Still has to break 20 to break even, but if it goes to 30, this person's going to be pretty happy making 10,000. I don't think that's very likely, but let's look at this. And you can just take that 25 to the 30. Make sure we're doing about $1,000. That's way too many. Let's go 19. Oh, nailed it. So now if the VIX goes to 30, this person can make almost 18,000. Now, vertical call spreads, again, low probability trade. You do have to be right on the direction and you do have to be right on the timing. This also bleeds down. But just as far as a risk reward ratio, you're essentially saying, well, I'm not actually thinking it's going to go to 60 or 80 or 100. I'm more thinking it's going to go to 20 to 30, somewhere in that range. This would be your trade. But again, I would actually default to the fact that even VIX getting to 20, I don't think that's a very realistic expectation. Obviously, one of these months, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. But my style of investing, I am always thinking you are better off doing something like this. Or absolutely nothing wrong with just going for the straight up iron condor. Covering a really nice range, you only need it to go up a little bit, you can make a nice big profit in the middle. If it does go all the way to here, like I said, you can just exit the trade. So if you've been following my live streams for any amount of time, you know that I don't really like those speculative contrarian plays. Just because we think the VIX is low does not mean that the market just has to spike and it's time to pile into the VIX calls. Even if it's been four or five months of stability, we do actually still have to play for the most likely scenario. And in this case, yeah, sure, the VIX might creep up a little bit higher, but I don't think it's realistic to expect that this is going to be the time where I'm going to slap my money on the table. It's going to go to 50 and I'm going to just pay off like a casino. I don't think that's a very good way to trade. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, look, the VIX is 13, 14. I wouldn't be surprising if it goes somewhere 15, maybe 18, 20, maybe even to 25. But past that, you're really going to have a super low probability of nailing it. So I would stick to something like that. Iron condor out of the money. So it makes sure that skewed the direction that you actually think it's going to go. Broken wing butterfly. Again, transfer all of that risk down to the side where you think is the least likely, which is low VIX in this case. Or if you really want to roll the dice, go ahead and stretch those strikes out on a vertical call spread and just target that number that you think it's going to go. Personally, not a trade that I would put on. I would stick to the other two. And for me, of course, broken wing butterflies are kind of my thing. So that's the one that I would default to if it was me, but always go for the higher probability trades. So for an extensive volatility metrics dashboard updated daily and to see all of the live trades for our tactical rotation and option strategies, click this link right here. 
and claim your free trial to the VTS community. You're always welcome to join us anytime. See you next time.